Good morning, everyone. I want to start by showing you an outline of the things I want to talk about today. Uh, so I want to talk about my rationale for structuring this online course this way. I want to talk about my office hours, the proposed schedule, last day of classes, marks, use of MEOs, active listening mark, privacy settings on Linker, and also some final thoughts and reflections on COVID-19. So starting first with the rationale for why I structured this course this way. Uh, you'll notice that we don't have any live classroom lectures or discussions. Uh, Zoom, for example, is the uh, platform many people use. Uh, first and foremost, because I believe that public speaking should be uh, attractive to look at, uh, lovely to listen to, and you don't get those qualities on these over-the-internet uh, video conferencing. The visuals are awful, the sound quality is awful. I also think that uh, we all have different schedules. Some of you have told me you're working at Maxi or other grocery stores, and so, and even then, we have different biorhythms. So some of us are morning people, I'm a morning person, and some of you are probably afternoon and evening people. So thus you can do the course when it suits you. Uh, my office hours, uh, since I'm a morning person, uh, most days between about 10 in the morning and two in the afternoon, I'll probably be online uploading a document like this or Word documents and dealing with MEOs and messages from you and judging your video productions. Uh, but after that, you know, after 2 p.m., I'm generally not available, but feel free to send me a MEO and I'll answer it the next day. Concerning our proposed schedule, uh, you, you're welcome to follow that if that works for you, that's fine. But if one or two of your courses perhaps are slow getting online now and this course is up and running uh, and you want to get ahead, charge ahead, that's fine. I just follow the procedure. The procedure is you need to read Chapter 5 on especially the use of statistics and the use of visual aids and Chapter 8, which is about how to be an informative teacher, the three goals you need to meet and how to do that. Uh, so once you've read those two chapters and produced your own quizzes on it and sent that in to me, feel free to go ahead with speech number two, whenever it works for you, uh, with visual aids. So that should be something probably more complex than what I just used, which was a little poster to show the outline for these reflections. Uh, so I will post a sheet of do's and don'ts for speech number two. Uh, but once you have all that information ahead, feel free to go ahead. And then once that's finished, feel free to go ahead with Chapter 9 on persuading your audience, especially Aristotle's three proofs, and uh, use whatever you want to win your argument, convince people to a certain action or a way of thinking in, in speech number three to persuade. Uh, notice there's a difference between to inform and to persuade, right? If you tell somebody how to compost, that's informative. If you're telling them why they should compost, that's persuasive. So it's going to be a good thing for me uh, if you are all staggered at different times rather than the project assignments all coming in in the same week, then I have more time to look at and give you feedback on your projects. Uh, the Commission of Studies at Champlain has recently, I think in the last day or two, decided the last day of class at Champlain will be May 20th. It's a Wednesday. Uh, that's fine. Uh, if, we, if you're finished by the 1st of May or you're finished by the 13th of May, as it's written in our course outline, that's absolutely fine. You don't, don't get any extra work. Feel free to work on your other courses. Uh, essentially, the administration has asked us as teachers to strip the courses down to their essentials. What are the skills you need to move on to the next level? And uh, certainly, once you've been able to do an entertaining speech, a toast where you uh, touch on your emotions in a real way, and you do an info how to teach other people something and how to persuade other people to something, <coughs> then you have the essential uh, uh, skills and being comfortable in public as a public speaker. 
So I will publish the marks uh, as they come up uh, on uh, Leia. I will use Mio's because that way I know you all receive messages from me and there's nobody giving me an excuse later of, oh, I didn't know this and I didn't know that and so on, right? So I you will use Mio's. Uh, in terms of your active listening mark, you'll notice that's worth 10% of your grade. Uh, so I will treat the first in-class time we had together, the first seven weeks, as worth 50% of that grade. In other words, 5 out of 10. And this next online participation as worth the other 50%, the other 5 out of 10 marks. So that's when you're uh, publishing, and this connects to the issue of privacy. Uh, when you go to publish your works on the internet, click on, uh, click on the choice of our class. Now, our class is a bit larger than what you're used to because, of course, I have two sections of the public speaking course, Group A, Group B, and that's why I asked you to put A in front of your name or B in front of your name to help me when I go to enter people's marks into the mark book. Uh, but so in essence, our class is now 70 people. I've also invited uh, Gabriel Flax, the former head of the humanities department and the man who created Linker as an educational platform. So I've asked him to join us so that he can give reflections because he is the res resource person I turn to when anything's not working for me on Linker. Uh, so please publish, uh, as I say, to the whole class, and please put comments on other people's works when you see them. Uh, the final comments I have has to do with uh, COVID-19, as reported in uh, the CBC News today, Saturday the 4th of April. There's at least four studies that have been done on the transmission of COVID-19. Uh, one was done on the passengers of the Diamond Princess, the uh, ship that was uh, marooned off Yokohama Harbor in Japan. One was done on some 563 evac Japanese evacu evacuees from Wuhan. And another study was done in a town called Ko in northern Italy, and a, th a fourth study done in, in Iceland. And in the, all of those studies, uh, ranging, f uh, they found people who had COVID-19, the number who were asymptomatic were ranged from 18% up to 50%. In short, somebody can have COVID-19 and show no symptoms, feel totally healthy. So the way we all should be acting from now on is, and perhaps up to this date too, but I don't think everyone understood this, that we should all be acting as if we have it and could potentially pass it on to someone else, or the other person we're talking to, they have it and they could be passing it on. So do follow the rules of self-quarantining and keeping social distance and washing your hands a lot and stay safe. So I wish you a good day. Bye.